Okay, so I start lah. Alright, uh, about 10-15 minutes. So this one is JEK lah. Ataupun Juru Teri Electrical Competent. Some of you maybe pernah dengar, maybe tak pernah dengar. So, uh, kalau untuk low voltage sampai ke 33 kV, maybe you pernah dengar charge man. Ataupun penjaga jentera kan. So this one is penjaga jentera high voltage lah. <laughs> Paling simple lah. Tapi dia panggil JEK lah. Juru Teri Electrical Competent eh. Uh, so, So dia cerita lah my journey lah. So tadi macam you tadi ada soalan kan. Macam tadi uh, my I graduated from Purdue University uh, US eh. So although it's in electrical tapi uh, bila I register dengan BM dia bagi I electronic. So I appeal lah dalam 3 tahun. 2007 ke 2010. So dia tak layan. Dia kata tak boleh tak boleh. You kena ambil exam. So I ambil lah exam. So masa tu ada I exam part 2. I exam part 2 ni tak ada tempat nak belajar. Tak ada tempat apa. Dia panggil you untuk exam dia. Pas pas fail fail je. You kena pass je. You tak perlu dapat A. You, you perlu dapat minimum. You kena pass je. Dapat minimum D je. D, D pass lagi lah universiti. Kan ya. Aku tak, tak ingat dah lama dah tinggal you lah. Tapi kena pass lah. So bila dah pass ni. You boleh bawa paper ni. Tunjuk ke BM. Kata you dah meet lah. That certain uh, subject yang tak cukup. Uh, tapi sebab satu paper tu fail. So saya pun ambil lah dekat unit 10 kan. Uh, so then uh, 2012. Register balik sebagai graduate engineer electrical. Uh, okay so. Uh, Masa tu saya tak terfikir lagi ya. Eh. Kalau you tengok 2004 saya kerja. After third year baru saya register dengan BM sebenarnya. 2007. So I lost about 3 years. So so the counting for the experience actually comes from 2007 lah for electronics. Uh, while for the electrical after I convert, the counting for electrical comes from 2012. Uh, that's the policy. So tak boleh nak buat apa walaupun you dah kerja daripada 2004. Okay, so that's why I always say, please register awal-awal tu. You graduate engineer lah. You buat apa ke tak apa, lantak pi. You register dulu. Uh, and then, uh, sometime in 2013, uh, the Electrical Supply Act, eh, 1990, dia ada buat amendment. Uh, kalau you PE dalam elektronik, boleh dapat boleh go for JEK lah. So, the, sebab tu dalam 2016 tu, saya saya pergi jugalah PE untuk, uh, sorry, uh, 2015 saya pergi for PE for elektronik. Because my target is to go for JEK lah. Uh, then 2016 saya go for juga jugalah for electrical. Ni saya sajalah sebab dah ada lalang buat jelah PE electrical. Uh, and then 2016 saya ambil JEK uh, only after first time reject sebab dia tengok dia kira tak cukup 3 bulan kot uh, pengalaman ah. Uh, and then uh, first time pergi fail uh, interview, second time baru pass lah. So uh, last year last uh, last two years lah baru dapat this uh, JEK lah jurutera electric competent eh. Okay, ni, ni pengalaman kerja ni lah. Tak apa lah. So, who is actually this competent person lah? So, competent person means a person yang ada certificate of competency issued by the commission. So, in this case, commission in Malaysia is Suruhan Jaya Tenaga or the Energy Commission lah. So, no installation electrical plant, equipment other than those owned or managed by a supply authority shall be worked on, operated except by under person yang ada qualification. Maknanya orang tu, siapa-siapa nak kerja dekat mana-mana installation electrical, kenalah ada Kompetensi lah. Ha, kalau, so, this are the kompetensi uh, ni. The Act and Regulation, uh, Rules and Regulation yang related. So, Electricity, Electricity Supply Act 1990, SR ataupun ERR 1994, Electrical Rules and Regulations 1994. So, sini ada link lah. Nanti tuan-tuan boleh download dari sini lah. So, this book memang uh, bread and butter of all uh, competent person lah. So, semua orang ni memang kena tahu I would say by, by heart lah apa, apa ni So, siapa sebenarnya competent person ni? So, we have uh, Jurutera Electric Perkhidmat Perkhidmatan Elektrikal ataupun Electrical Service Engineer Jurutera Electric Competent like myself Competent Electrical Engineer Penyelia Elektrik Electrical Supervisor Penjaga Jentera or Charge Man Pendawai Wire Man Ay, Kalau paling nak cepat buat duit lepas SPM ni lah Habis SPM ambil 6 bulan wiring boleh buka company dah PW1, PW2 lah eh. Ha, ni kalau dapat kontrak banyak ni pun tak payah tak payah kerja tak payah kerja susah-susah lah just buat kerja wiring je tapi kena dapat volume lah ha, and then of course pencantung kabel lah PK lah eh. so kita ada 1, 2, 3 ada 6 kategori but today I only focus on JEP and JEK lah ha, so JEK kita ada banyak kategori uh, so PE is penyedia elektrik lah dia boleh up to 1 kV Then JEK1 sampai JEK6, kita ada sampai daripada 11 kW sampai lah ke NIL lah. NIL, NIL is basically unlimited. So, the highest voltage in Malaysia currently is only 500 kV lah. 500 kV punya line lah. 
So for myself, I am here lah, JEK4, up to 132KB lah. Okay, so this is uh, competent person eh. Okay, any questions so far? Kalau ada, boleh tanya lah. So, 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 saya ada, saya ada. Okay, silakan. Ha. So, uh, you after involve yourself in the consultancy field? Uh, I mean, I mean, do you involve yourself in the consultancy field? Uh, not, not as directly as a consultant, but uh, more as a as a client lah, client to the consultant lah. But then, but then, how you get the title of uh, the title of the IR? Ah, PE, uh, because in in the in uh, the PE. Uh, if you remember just now, if I, uh, there, there is four parts, four types of here. Uh, one is, uh, one is the, uh, installation up to commissioning, eh. Second is on the design. Third is on the operation and maintenance. So, and fourth is on the research and development. So, the third operation and maintenance, that is, uh, one of the, one of the uh, part that, it, that they allow, lah, for you to do as a technical report. Inside the oh, when you apply oh, for the BM, okay. Oh, ah, okay. so not not necessary for you to become a PE. You have to become a consultant. No, even you can just you can be work in JKR, but you do electrical maintenance, right? So that maintenance, the way why you do maintenance because in the maintenance you have testing and commission uh, testing lah. You have testing, you have some engineering principles there. So that one you can jumble up and create a technical report and. Present that to BM or AM lah. Hmm. So that, so doesn't really mean PE ni kena jadi consultant, bukan lah. Hmm. Okay ya? Eh? Oh, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Uh, there's a lot lah, uh, because like my, I'm in the industry, industry uh, oil and gas industry. So most of us that go for PE are all coming from the operation and maintenance background. Of course, yang design tu lebih more advantage lah because they have the design experience very structured kan daripada uh, daripada conceptual all the way to the commissioning. So, but for us, uh, BM they already allow that operation and maintenance punya scope lah. So, not not too rigid lah for us to pursue PE. Okay. Okay, okay. Alright. So this is uh, the responsibilities of a competent person. There's a lot here, but I will not dwell too much. Uh, so basically, uh, this is uh, all related in the in the nila in this book. Huh? Semua dalam buku nila. Uh, so I'm just summarizing it here. Lah. So basically, testing, commissioning, uh, for you to access a low voltage, high voltage switchboard, you must be competent. You want to do wiring, you must be competent. Uh, you want to, you, you even uh, as a JEK, you still can submit plan. Lah. So this is one thing extra lah. Sometimes you don't have PEPC, right? But you need to submit plan. But you have a JEK because for you to become a JEK, you have a, you only need you only need to become a PE. You do need to become a professional engineer or practicing cert. So under this clause, you they are, they allow you to submit plans lah to the authorities. Uh, so this is one of the advantage lah for becoming a JEK or JEP. And then uh, you have a periodic inspection. Uh, this one is, uh, uh, this is by law lah, Inspe installation uh, 11 kV up to 132 kV must have some inspection lah. So every every week, every two weeks, so this is uh, moni monetary gain lah for JEK or JEP. Okay, then the rest, uh, not too much lah. Okay, so how actually can you become a JEK? Eh? So Jurutera Electric Competent. So number one, uh, the rule is that you have to become a Malaysian. Uh, second is electrical or electronics degree. Uh, okay. Uh, so degree, it doesn't matter if you're electronics degree, but the important part is here. Uh, then you have to become a PE in BM. So it can be it can be that you're a PE in electrical or you or it can be that the case you are a PE in electronics. Lah. Uh, but the most important is that if you are a PE in electrical, you must have five years uh, operation and control in electrical equipment for it for electronics. Uh, sorry, yeah, uh, this one doesn't mean eight years experience in electronics. Uh. this one means eight years in operation and control of electrical equipment. Uh, so you have to have at least eight years uh, if you are having a PE in electronics in electrical equipment. Uh. So uh, uh, then, of course, can be able to speak and write in Bahasa Malaysia. Uh. 
So once you meet all this requirement, you can apply for the interview and assessment lah for JEK. Okay. Uh, uh, then the next step, if you want to go to JEP, once you have attained JEK, I think you have to wait minimum one year. Uh, then you have to be Malaysian also the same. So the only difference is for you to become a Jurutera Electric Perkhidmatan, you have to become a JEK. Then after you one year as a JEK, you can go for the JEP in the same voltage level. And then uh, as extra for JEP, you, ha you have to be involved or show that you have been involved. Uh, because uh, sometimes not everyone has the opportunity to work with the electrical testing company. So uh, how, the other way for you to go around is that when you do maintenance, even though you are a client, you have to be involved. Lah. You show then maybe you get some endorsement from the JEP that you were involved with the testing and calibration lah, of that equipment. Uh, then you can prove that to uh, ST. Lah. So if accepted, then you can go for JEP. Lah. Okay, so this is this is JEK and JEP lah. Okay, so the experience. Uh, so this is uh, the assessment. So you have for electronics, you have to have eight years, five years for electrical. Uh, you have to go for first eight course. Eh? Now first eight course, uh, just do it online. Uh, if not, you just go for the two days course lah. Two days course uh, under Saint John ke mana mana. Then apply JEK through ECOS. ECOS is the online portal lah for Suranjaya Tenaga. Then uh, ST will inform you the eligibility for you to sit the exam. And then once they send you the letter, uh, this information, they will ask you to submit a report. So what is the report about? Uh, they will ask you pretty much on about these items lah. About switching procedure, what are the duties of uh, JEK, what are the electrical safety improvement. These are example lah, not 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 every time it's the same questions lah. Okay, then uh, once you submit after two weeks, they will call you for they will call you for exam lah. Uh, this and the process from the day you apply up to the exam normally may take up to one year lah. May take up to one year. Uh, then after the exam switching procedure, there's an oral interview. Uh, then if okay. Uh, the, the oral is mainly depend uh, based on the act and regulation and uh, and the JAK syllabus and if you fail uh, you have to reset again the exam so if you fail only the switching you only reset you only switch for the switching lah. if you fail the oral you only switch for the oral lah. okay so and these are all being conducted by nilah Surahanjaya Tenaga lah, the energy commission so if you fail you have to uh, you can re reapply after 6 months lah. So, this is pretty much the process lah for for the JEK ya. Eh. JEP pun uh, is about the same. Cuma dia punya experience tu is a little bit different lah. Uh. Okay, any questions so far on JEK? Okay, slightly above 15 minutes. So, this is the summary lah of your where you can go after your university ya. Eh. You complete university, register BM, either you want to go to the consultancy line or you can go both to the uh, competency line. So these are the routes that you can go through. Lah. So hopefully whatever that I share with you today will, will uh, assist you lah in, this, in your decision making to further later, lah, further your professional career in, your, in the future. Lah. So that is all from me. Lah. Thank you, Dr. Anissa uh, and uh, students and all.